Hello everyone, Freak here, and it's time for the first major balance patch of Legends of Runeterra post-launch. It's patch 1.2, Burning Tides is out, and it is Monday afternoon for me. Uh, as far as what I have read, the changes will go into effect for your actual gameplay on Wednesday. Uh, the patch will be like physically delivered to your computer through the internet on Tuesday, and then they'll flip a switch on Wednesday to make it all actually happen. That's my understanding of patch cadence. So it's two days early. So if you're you know planning on playing a newly buffed card or beating a newly nerfed card, it's going to be on Wednesday. It's a different, slightly different cadence from League of Legends, where the notes come out on Tuesday and then it's live the next day. Uh, for LOR, seemingly because of the mobile clients um, and the difficulty of using. I'm kind of guessing at this point, like I'm not on the team, so don't take this as like a direct quote of like, this is definitely why it works. It's, it is my observations as someone who does not work on the game. Uh, I always really want to caveat that since that can be sometimes misunderstood or misconstrued. Uh, it seems to be that difficulty working with um, app stores makes that sometimes difficult. So it's a Wednesday is the patch timing uh, in in gameplay practical terms. Okay, so let's talk about patch 1.2. Um, I got to take a look at it before I started recording the video. I think it's a very good patch. I like it a lot. Um, they are taking a swing at almost every top tier deck, and that's going to make things kind of interesting uh, because who really knows it's going to be top tier afterwards? There's some good nerfs, some good buffs. Let's talk about it. Okay, so patch 1.2 features our first balance changes since the debut of Raising Tides, as well as a bunch of cl card clarity updates. Ironic to verbally typo on card clarity. Um, also, for a bit of time, you get the exclusive Rainbow Poor Guardian and Emote for free. Just buy it for zero coins. And as a reminder, starting with this patch, we're adjusting how we patch LOR to make sure everyone plays on it simultaneously. The short version is it will patch on Tuesday, but you won't be live until Wednesday. So there you go. Double dipping on that one. I know they said it faster than I did. We're two minutes in. We haven't gotten any changes yet. Sorry about that. Alrighty, so let's just talk about some stuff. Generally speaking, I keep I, I skip over a lot of the context stuff, but if you want to read this, please feel free. They're smart people. They're smarter than me. They know the game better than I do. Let let them let them go. Uh, okay, so level two Vladimir buffs. Now Vladimir is a champion where not only is a champion, good fact, um, similar to Swain, and it's actually kind of funny because almost every Noxian champion has this happen. Um, the likelihood of hitting level 2 very early is quite high, right? Swain levels up while or gets XP while he's not on the board. Uh, you just need to have um, a bunch of other units take damage and live, and then Swain comes down flipped. So um, in a lot of cases, Swain should, even without buffs, be a 5-mana 6-6 six, six regen, which is obviously a very, very good stat line. Um and there's a certain part of that that I feel is a little bit undervalued. Now, that said, of course, it can be hard to have, I think it's six, it's five or six units um, live while taking damage up to that point. So it's not as easy as, say, Swain, where Swain just comes down on five at level two. Letter's a bit more tough than that. And so, you know, getting a, you know, turn seven, six, six is not very strong. I get that. So, uh, but, but Swain, or sorry, I should say Vladimir, uh, does have a very good stat line, like, you know, it's not that hard to flip him, so he frequently is level 2. But the cool payoff is now, instead of just simply damaging one to the enemy Nexus, he drains one from the enemy Nexus. So this gives Noxus, I believe, their first bit of life gain in the entire group. Um, I don't believe Noxus has access to life gain at all uh, until Vladimir. Now, I could be wrong about that. It may be something I'm missing. There might be a lifesteal somewhere in there, but not that I can think of off the top of my head. Um, and not any time I've played against Nox have I ever thought about them having life gain. But so this is actually a little bit of new flavor for Nox. That said, it's very thematic to Vladimir. So I think this is a great thematic win. Um, it is indeed a power buff. And one thing I have tended to notice, um, any time I'm playing lots of big units, whether it's in Constructed or in Expeditions, if they don't have Overwhelm, I tend to lose out on tempo. So even though I have these like big one mana five fives or, you know, eight threes or whatever, if they just get chumped by a two two or a three three and just die, I'm not getting any value out of that. Uh, in fact, I'm usually spending more resources than I'm getting back. I'm just killing a mediocre unit and I'm not hitting the enemy Nexus, which means that when they counterattack me, they didn't lose any health, but I'm going to, because they're probably gonna have some kind of good attack left over. Um, and I end up just dying before I can get another 5-5 five, five, and another 5-5 five, five, and another 6-3 and another big unit on the board. Um, 
by Vladimir actually having drain and, you know, letting you heal for, you know, the max is five, by the way, right? If your board is full, it heals you for five and, and deals five. Um, obviously, they judgment you beforehand at zero, whatever, but like, you know, somewhere between two and five life gain every other attack. It basically says that Vladimir has half life steal. It's half life steal on half his attacks. Um, or, or on half the rounds, because it's only when he attacks. Uh, I know it's like a kind of a word, weird, like vague way to say it, but what it comes down to is, you know, if Vladimir gets to attack twice, you're going to heal for, let's call it seven. If Vladimir can heal you for seven over the course of his life, that's a very, very, very good buff. Seven Nexus Health, when you're trying to kind of grind your opponent down, which is generally speaking how like a Scars themed deck, like a, a self damage but live themed deck kind of works is, yeah, you, you kind of need a couple extra turns to grind them down because you don't tend to have Overwhelm. Um, this is aligning really well with, I think, what the deck needs. I think it does need, like, one or two extra turns, and this can do so. Um, this was probably a little bit too slow to beat um, a really, really aggro deck that tries to kill you on five um, because odds are you probably don't flip on five and then attack right away, so... Um, for the really, really aggressive decks, you don't quite get there. For the really, really slow decks that are trying to one-hit kill you, like Ezreal or something, um, that you're probably not getting there either. But this will occasionally top you off enough that, that you will survive mid-range matchups. It is a good buff. This will help. Um, the more I talk about it, the less I think the buff matters. But, um, it's a nice touch upwards. This deck is not completely garbage, and a lot of the other top-tier decks are going down. So just against the field, the ladder decks are getting a lot better. All right, next up, we're going to go probably a little bit quicker down the line. Karma is one mana more expensive. This is a obviously very, very big nerf. Uh, well, okay, I don't want to say very, very big. Uh, I immediately step back off my first statement. Um, this definitely matters, right? This is this is definitely meaningful. Um, the first karma that comes to mind is that you can no longer play Karma and Unyielding Spirit on the same turn. Uh, you, it's just that that mana is completely blocked off. If you want to cover Karma with Deny, you have to wait till seven instead of waiting till six. Uh, assuming you're floating all the spell mana. Um, it means you can't play Karma plus another 5-drop sometime on 10. It means you're playing it with Ezreal combo, like you're playing Ezreal and Karma on the same round. Um, you've got one less mana left over for spamming spells. Uh, this can add up over time. In general, what this tends to do is it... Uh, even though it's like, okay, well, it's generically one more mana, so the the nerf is going to be sort of fairly diffused, right? It's, it's You're just going to feel it a little bit over the course of time. My experiences tend to be that it's actually very specific. Um, that one mana tends to matter a lot in very certain matchups. So talking about covering Karma with the Nye, for example, means you can only cover her on seven, not on six, uh, with deny mana if you have all of your spell mana up. Well, that means that, you know, if you're playing Demacia with single combat or concerted strike or whatever, um, it's like, well, that means you are actually very free to fully develop on six because you know. If they play Karma, you can single combat. Um, whereas before, it's like, well, I want to be able to, like, beat Deny in single combat again, so I'm, like, a little, like, but it ends up giving you your Scythria attack without Deny covering Karma, if that was, like, a thing they were going to do. Um, that's, like, a really big deal. Um, it means you can play Ruination on six if you floated all your spell mana and know that Karma can't cover herself when you do that. They have to wait an extra round. Like sometimes those are very specific circumstances where very specific matchups are advantaged as a result. Um, just in general though, Karma being delayed by a round um, just overall matters. Your opponent being down one mana the whole time when they play Karma definitely matters. This is going to be felt. Karma was, I would say, one of the top three champions in LOR. Um... Maybe number one overall because she's in more decks than any other champion except for Vi. Stay tuned. Uh, yeah, I think good nerf overall. Shen is getting buffed. Um, Fiora players rejoice, obviously, but uh, Shen definitely was not doing all that well overall. Um, he had to see people gain barriers, so he always came down at level one. And, you know, a four mana 2-5 is a pretty weak stat line. You're paying a full one extra mana for the support buff. And in general, being a 2-5 means you could block him with a 3-3 twice and he would just die. Um, now if you block him with a 3-3, he kills the 3-3. Um, in fact, it means that he tends to beat most 4-drops because most 4-drops end up tending to be 4-3s or things like that, kind of. Um, like, I'm thinking of um, a Chump Wump, for example, is a very big 4-drop that we see kind of a lot of. Um, 
I say kind of auto, it's actually fairly common, interestingly enough. Uh, but yeah, that, that ends up lining really well into that stat line. He gets to kill Chump Up and still live. Um, the fact that he can actually beat things down a bit more is really, really valuable because it means he actually trades the unit out. One thing I really want to point out, um, and this is something that, that it took me a long time to unlearn, and I'm going to assume a lot of other players don't really keep this in their mind as well. It is okay to not have your champion level up. Yes, yeah, certainly your champions are among the best cards in your deck, but they are not always your win condition. Like, if you're playing Karma Ezreal, yes, Karma and Ezreal are the only way you actually win the game. But if you're playing a Shen deck, Shen just is a reasonably good card. He's just solid. You know, it, in, in this state here, he is a completely f fair stat line for four mana. It's a reasonable stat line for four mana with a very big support upside. And theoretically, a really, really big level up upside where a 4-6 for four, four is an amazing stat line and giving people three attack all, the, all over the place is amazing as well. But if Shen just simply kills two three threes, that is a very, very good use of four mana. That's completely fine. Shen is not your win condition. He is just a good card that made you go up two mana and a card. That's amazing. That is all he needs to do to be very effective worth including in your deck. So one thing I really want to kind of point out, because the only way Shen realistically levels up a lot of the time without um, Bright Steel Formation, is that he attacks a lot. And it's okay if he attacks twice, kills two three threes, and dies, because, well, the Fior that he gave Barrier to also killed something. Um, and you came out ahead. So it really is okay to let Shen die. The fact that he has more power means that he's more likely to kill off two cards before doing so and makes him quite nice. This is a good buff to Shen. I think Shen is um, way less of a garbage card. That's good. Um, I could to I, I mean, I think this is immediately good enough to be... Um, he was already, I think, fine in Limited. I think he was actually pretty okay in Expeditions because it tends to be hard to beat that barrier value, and a 2-5 would, would tend to at least get two or three fights. Um, but yeah, I think this lines up really, really well. I think this is... Um, you can definitely find a solid Constructed deck with, with Shen. It's probably not Tier 1. It's just one power. It's not, that, it's not that big of a deal, but I think it's actually pretty solid. Next up is a Vi nerf, which is, I think, very well-deserved. Vi was, I think the generically strongest champion in Burning Tides. Um, ultimately because, turns out, having a very, very durable challenger unit is good. I mean, she tended to be a 5-6 challenger. Like, you probably had about three spells come down, so she could fight whatever she wanted to fight and kill it, so a Radiant Guardian or whatever. Uh, okay, you have to go to six for that, but still, you know, what I, you know what my point is. And she had functionally six life. So she was functionally a five mana, 5-6 five, challenger, which is obviously absurd, right? A 3-mana a 2-4 challenger um, was pretty good, but really only because of War Chefs. Um, and that was basically averaging a 3-3 three, three stat line for 3 mana, uh, plus 1, minus 1 for the attack and health. Vi was, generally speaking, above both those numbers at 5, but the fact that she's tough means she often had 7 or sometimes 8 health. Uh, so she was heavily, 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 heavily above the stat line. Um, what's nice about tough and, and how big this nerf is, is that um, the more likely the unit is to be one shot, the less tough matters. So she's much more likely to be a pure 5-5 five five now. And a 5-5 five five challenger is reasonably fair. I mean, think about what a Swiftwing Lancer does. It's a 5-mana five 5-4 five that then draws you a card um, with challenger, of course. So it's like, okay, well, Vi is a 5-mana... 5-5, five, 6-5, five, 4-5, five, 7-5, five, five, you know, something around there without the card draw. Suddenly, it's a... Yeah, this feels about as fair as Swift Swing Lancer. Um, of course, the upside can still be very good. If you ever do flip her and then you use Judgment, you're in an amazing spot, obviously. Um, you know, there, there's still some combo out there, but, I mean, Vi just tends to be a fairly generic kind of a beater sort of unit. I mean, look at the way people use Elise right now, and even Callisto to a certain extent. It's like... Yeah, the champ's not my win condition. It's just a very, very good card. And that's fine. Like, not every champion is a build-around. I think that's completely acceptable, like, design space for the game. Lucian's not really a build-around either. He's just a really, really good two-drop that, hey, sometimes flips and that can make the, the game hard. That's okay. I think it's correct that LOR doesn't turn into, does my champion's win condition beat your champion's win condition? Not every deck is Lux Karma. Not every deck is Karma Ezreal. Not every deck is Heimerdinger. Um... That's a, a good thing, in my opinion. So, yeah, Vi is, you know, generic in a sense, but um, 
this is obviously, again, a well-deserved nerf. It means that um, five drops with five attack, which is, you know, reasonably common, Radiant Guardian being a good example again, um, actually kill Vi 1v1, which is, which is, yep, this now, this is a very big power nerf to Vi. Um, really, really matters a lot. Next up, Hecarim is getting buffed back up. Uh, had been hit, you could say, a little bit too hard uh, in the most recent nurse, which is the end of the beta season. Uh, he went from being a 4-6 a to being a 4-5, and his um, spectral widows went from being 3-2s to being 2-2s, two uh, which meant that he lost not only one health, but essentially two attack. Um, he's getting one attack back. So he shipped as a 4-6. He is now a 5-5. Five, five. This means he is more killable, but he does deal more damage. I think that is completely fine for an Overwhelm type unit. Um, I think it's this is an acceptable stat line to have shipped at in the first place. Um, but yeah, um, said it, you know, split too hard to find profitable attacks. That definitely makes sense. I mean, playing a unit on 6 and tending to just die to a 5-5 five, five feels pretty bad. So um, he at least, again, can just trade with a 5-5 five, five and then, you know, do whatever. Um, seven ephemeral allies attacking at some point during the game. If you're really theming around it, Hecarim can come down leveled up, or at least attack leveled up, because he summons two, uh, and then plus the shark chariot that you played earlier, so he summons three. So it's really like attack with four allies, play Hecarim, swing on six, he's six mana, six, six. Um, I think this puts Hecarim in a pretty good spot. I think this ends up landing him in a healthy design space where it is not terribly hard to level him up. I think having... Again, assuming you've played Shark Chariot at some point during this game, um, it's attack with four ephemerals earlier on. Um, considering, uh, you know, Stirred Spirits is around, um, Haunted Relic is summoned three one ones, um, Blighted Caretaker summoned two two one saplings. Uh, people tend to play Hecarim with um, Maokai decks sometimes because uh, Maokai is summoning these saplings and they're ephemeral. Um, yeah, Hecarim, you know, it should fairly reliably come down as a six six. And that is very, very, very good. Um, what my very first favorite deck in LOR was Ephemeral Hecarim. It was with Zed instead of Maokai, but you know maybe Maokai is the better choice now. Who knows? But um, this is this is like, this is like my first favorite champion in LOR. So I'm always very, very happy to see Hecarim be viable. Um, uh, yeah, I'm about it. Good stuff. Will Hecarim decks be tier one again? This is. That's kind of hard to say. I think there's there's so many unknowns um, when this kind of these kinds of changes happen. When like a lot of decks go down, a lot of decks go up. Um, but I mean, again, it, to the point where like Hecarim decks should be viable. Um, this this feels like a pretty healthy spot for the for the champion to be. All right, so Great Horn Companion gets to be less garbage. It is now a five mana five five with Scout, and this tends to line up with how it felt Scout was working, which is that the unit needs to be statted fairly before scout like scout is about as seems to be about as powerful as regeneration or overwhelm or tough or challenger where it's really worth one stat point and obviously you weren't really trying to play vanilla five mana five sixes but that would be like the bare minimum you were willing to play um for a unit to be decent right was you know equal my stats with my mana cost and give me plus one somewhere and it's either a keyword um, or it's something else. Obviously, there's elusives where their keyword is worth more than one mana um, or more than one stat point. Okay, there's some keywords are better than others, don't get me wrong. But Scout was not that, right? Because, you know, they can block you and kill your unit. So your unit had better be good enough to fight something on the board. Otherwise, why are you playing it? Um, and a 5 out of 5, 5 tends to be good enough now. Um, where, right, this is the unit that comes down on a Vi turn. Well... Vi obviously just ate this for free, and it was, okay, not for free, she had one health afterwards, but it wasn't very good. Um, actually, she had two health afterwards, now she actually dies to it, right? Because Vi went down by one, and this went up by one. Um, this, yeah, I, I mean, if you were going to kill it, you're still going to kill it, but it's going to trade with Avaros and Hearthguard, and now that you've gotten rid of their biggest blocker, you can now attack with the rest of your army, and their 5-5 five five is not there to take a profitable block against misfortune or whatever, right? Um, this going plus one attack is actually really, really big, specifically because of what I just mentioned. Um, they either chump block it, and that's fine. You're going to trade two cards for one, and that's pretty acceptable. That's, that's a good use of a five drop in general. Um, or it actually takes off the big blocker that they have while still giving misfortune one XP or Quinn one XP or whatever. 
um, and then letting the rest of your army go. So that actually works really, really well. This ends up being a pretty big deal. Now, this card was not quite playable, don't get me wrong. This was this was a weak card. Gaining one power helps. Are you going to auto-include Greyhorn Companion? Probably not. What's also awkward is this also conflicts with um, Radiant Guardian. It conflicts with Quinn. Uh, it conflicts with a lot of other very, very good 5-drops. Um where oftentimes you wanted to play Quinn on five, not Great Horn Companion on five. And then you probably wanted to play um, Scythria or um, Genevieve on six to, like, you know, get your attack buff ready to go. So it's positioned kind of awkwardly. And the reason why Radiant Guardians got on five, by the way, is, like, you play Grizzly Rage on four, you attack on five, if they ever trade the body, you then get, you know, Radiant Guardian down, then Radiant Guardian gets all the buffs, then you attack with Radiant Guardian on the second attack. Like, that lines up pretty well. Um... So there's still some level of awkwardness here, uh, just because it conflicts with um, things you would want to play on that mana curve. Um, this is like, realistically, I feel like it's that... Like, I just don't feel like it's that good of a card. This is very good and limited, though. This is a card that you're happy to draft in Expeditions, because it, it will work well for you. It is a totally solid body on five that almost always survives their first piece of removal, unless it's Thermal Beam, in which case you spent all their mana, and then you feel really confident to attack afterwards. Um... Uh, and then beyond that, you get, um, you know, if they don't have removal, it's going to trade two cards out uh, in kind of almost all cases. So uh, it works well in Expeditions. Uh, I still feel like it's almost too awkward to play in, in Constructed. Uh, again, most because it's, its best deck has a five-cost champion, so good luck. Um, like, that was one of the buffs they did to Garen way, way, way back when in um, Closed Beta. Uh, or, like, in the preview patch or something. Um, it might have even been before it ever showed up for all of you, but Garen used to be a 6-mana six 6-6, six, six, uh, which meant that it was hard to play him when you wanted to play Scythria instead, so putting him at 5 gave him a couple more options to compete against and, and was maybe more playable there. Um, anyway, yeah, um, I still think the card is slightly weak, but uh, in a lot better spot where it's, it's actually worth considering including. Grizzled Ranger is now a 3-1. That is a really big deal. This was probably the, the single best non-champion that was printed in Burning Tides. Um, this was just definitely absurd. Uh, what's interesting is basically now ignoring it means you lose 6 health instead of losing 8 health. That is a big deal. Uh, as a chump blocker, it doesn't kill things with 4 health anymore. That can matter. Um, it doesn't kill um, Badger Bears, for example. Uh, it doesn't kill leveled up Karma. It doesn't... Um, I mean, there's just a lot of things, right? A lot of things have four health and not three health. So it matters in all those cases. It is a worse single combat target. It, it, it doesn't go to five if you can buff it with a War Chefs. I mean, I'm just listing numbers that obviously are there, but like, this is a very big deal. The card is still two cards for one card. Um, uh, spoiler alert, Loyal Badger Bear becomes a 3-4 instead of a 4-4. That is obviously also a very big nerf. Um... But the game doesn't really have any 3-mana three 3-4s, three right? So that is still a unique stat line, as far as I can think of. Um, that is very, very good. So um, still solid. But yeah, Grizzled Ranger um, ends up still being a good card. Um, this is probably still going to be run in Bannerman, in Scouts, for obvious reasons. Um, this is actually quite solid. Um, I'm about it. Uh, I want to go back one more point to Great Horn Companion. Uh, one good thing this does is if you have MF on board, she got to get 2 XP earlier on. Um, Great Horn Companion is much more likely to then be in your deck um, because it's it's probably playable and you can play it on 5. It probably lives for the first attack and thus you can more likely level up MF on 5 if she was able to use a scout on 3 somehow. Um, okay, let's move on. Grizzle Ranger, yeah. Um, definitely, definitely meaningful nerf. Uh, definitely still a very good card, but probably not the best card in the game anymore. The best non-champion card, at least. Laurent Chevalier. When I strike, create another random challenger follower in hand. So now it's a 4-mana 3-2 draw a card. Instead of a 4-mana 3-1 draw a card. Now, of course, if you could give this thing barrier, like with Shen, um, or any other way of making it live by maybe giving it uh, tough and killing a 1-attack unit, um, that could be really nice. The big thing is that, indeed, this doesn't die to Vile Feast, which means you don't go down two mana for the exchange. It has to die to Mystic Shot, which is less bad. Um, again, I think Ranger Resolve existing is such a big deal for Demacia because it lets you play these fairly weak units and survive Withering Whale and Vile Feast and Mystic Shot. Um, I think Ranger's Resolve is a very, very good card, for those who don't know that card. It is the one mana burst spell that gives all units tough for this round that is very effective. Um, and considering that that card is main deckable in a lot of decks... 
Um, Chevalier now dodges most removal if you are holding on to your range of resolve, uh, which means that your opponent burned their removal spell for nothing, and you still get to strike, and maybe still get to kill a one attack minion and draw a card and still keep the Chevalier. Um, very, very good. Uh, is the card actually good, though? Uh, so a 4 mana 3 2 draw card is fairly weak. So for comparison, um, Static Shock is a 4 mana deal 2 damage draw card. This is 4 mana deal 3 damage draw card. Um, Static Shock is arguably a strictly better card than Chevalier as a result. Um, as another thought, um, right, this in most cases dies to what it kills. You know, it kills a 3 3, a Fiora or something. Um, assuming it doesn't have a missing shot. Okay, it is. Um, you know, four mana gotcha draw a card. Uh, and gotcha costs four or sometimes costs two. Okay, that's actually pretty reasonable. Um, this is, I think, as kind of can, we'll kind of continue here, uh, this is a pretty decent card in Expeditions. Um, the, th the ability to go up one card and maybe even up two cards is quite a big deal. Um, dodging one one damage removal is definitely meaningful. Um, Shadow Isles is pretty common, and Shadow Isles is not seeing really any nerfs, so Shadow Isles is going to be very common. Um, yep, we're going to see a lot of Vile Feast, a lot of Withering Whales. Getting out of that range is pretty meaningful. Um, I'm going to like it in Expeditions. Um, this wants to be in a Shen deck. Um, we are going to see people try to build Shen decks uh, because Shen got buffed and a good Shen card here got buffed as well. Um, we may see this come down. Um, is it going to be an all-star? Probably not, but I can I can see it be playable. Um, this feels like a card that is playable. The upside is moderate. The upside is very good if you can actually manage to get Frostbite Synergy or Barrier Synergy or Tough Synergy or something else to where this unit can continually draw cards and generate card advantage because it will it will kill three health units. It will generate a card. And if you want to burn a combat trick to keep this alive, that's fine. You're spending mana on cycling, which is, you know, fairly reasonable while still removing things. You're, you're getting a, a, you know, reasonable tempo play as well as a totally acceptable value play. Um, next up is Badger Bear going down to a 3-4. Um, this was probably another one of the very best cards printed in the expansion. Um, very, very, very strong overall. And and yeah, being being a 3-4 means really big things. Um, the fact that it can't kill four health units is is absolutely meaningful. What's also interesting is now Badger Bear can't kill itself. So now if you go Badger Bear into Badger Bear, holding on a Radiant Strike is a big deal. This also means if Demacia is still going to be a top-tier deck, which... It honestly might be. They're not getting nerfed that hard. Um, I mean, like, Demacia was a tier 1 deck before Grizzled Ranger and Badger Bear existed. And the only nerfs Demacia is really seeing, as we kind of scroll through again, right, is, well, Vladimir's getting better, Karma's getting worse, Shen's getting better, which, to be fair, sometimes you're running Ioni with Demacia, so maybe you see this, but probably not. Okay, Demacia tended to be running Vi. Like, the reason Bannerman in the current day was the best deck is because it was running Vi, it was running Grizzled Ranger, and it was running Badger Bear. Um, so now it's just going back to the set one version where you can choose to play Badger Bear, you can choose to play Grizzled Ranger, you can choose not to, um, and continue on with your life. Um, and these cards are still pretty solid. But if we are going to see a lot of Badger Bears, which I think we probably still will, um, because a 3 mana 3 4 is a totally reasonable stat line, especially when you're going to play Bannerman the next round, um, where uh, Demacia kind of wants to err on the side of bonus health, uh, because they love for Bannerman to hit and get their attack back on curve. I mean, this is now a 3-mana 4-5 if Bannerman hits. That beats every 3 and 4 drop in the game. I think there's a 4-mana 5-5 five five and that's it. Like, there, there's one in Noxus. 4-mana, there's there's the, the Crimson Awakener thing is a 4-mana 5-5. Five five. I think that's like it, right? Um, so, other than, than that card, which, okay, to be fair, it's getting played more because Vlad buffs. Um, absolutely awesome, right? Uh, we're in there on that one. Um, so I think, you know, the end result is that, uh, Bannerman is still alive and well. Demacia, I think, is still alive and well, uh, most likely, but certainly losing some very, very important touches where both halves of Grizzled Rangers losing one power. And there is really a chance that you don't main deck loyal Badge of Air anymore. I think this card is still played in almost every Demacia deck. It's probably played in all of them, because even at worst, even if you are playing a slower deck, it is still two bodies, and it will tend to block pretty well. Even if it only chump blocks a 4-4, which there aren't many of, um, 
you're still fine because you put it down to a 4-1 and you still keep a badger bear to fight something else down the line and, and do well. Like, the only thing you really get screwed on here is it doesn't kill um, pre-nerf boom crew rookie. Spoiler alert, now it does still. So, it's fine. Uh, badger bear, again, lines up well. Most things that your opponent has on three, this kills. War Chef's Fiora beats it. That's a new change, right? Um, again, specific things tend to change with small nerfs. Uh, it is generally weaker. Very specific matchups punish it pretty hard. You can no longer stand alone on three with your three drop. That is going to pretty much brick the um, Zed Fiora Solitary Monk standalone deck. Um, goodbye to that deck. It wasn't really tier one anymore anyway, um, but it had its moment in the sun when people were still figuring out their decks. Uh, regardless... Um, this is going to hurt those Fiora, um, uh, 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 uh. I mean, it's going to hurt Fiora decks a lot, by the way, right? Fiora decks getting hit really, really hard. Now, I, I know there's been a lot of complaints around Fiora unyielding spirit stuff. I still don't think it's that big of a deal. Yeah, it can matter. Like, it, it can be a decent way of playing the game out. Um, I don't, it, it, whatever. Like, it's, it's fine. Um, but obviously, again, Fiora standalone is losing a lot of its tools, right? Uh, or a lot of its tools are getting weakened. Standalone is worse. Um... Uh, the Grizzled Ranger and Badger Bear are worse. Uh, some of the other stuff is better, again, so that the Shen version might be a bit stronger. Uh, but yeah, um, meaningful overall, right? Me meaningful nerf. This, this really, really changes things a lot. Fiora on three is no, no longer um, immediately amazing. Now it has to be Radiant Strike to get enough power to beat a 4-4 four, four, or a 3-4. It has to be um, Twin Disciplines to tap out on mana to do that kind of thing. Um, this ends up creating a lot more weaknesses, um, which is going to be a really, really big deal if you are decks. Legion Rearguard is now a 3-1. Pretty big nerf. Nerf number one to the Burn Aggro deck that um, was a tier one face deck. Um, definitely a good performer um, from watching tournament play. What's interesting is, is so I uh, climbed to master this season playing 90% um, 90, uh, 90%, 95%. 95% I played Scouts, and then the last 5% from Diamond 120 LP, I played Bannerman. Um, across both those decks, I went either 10-1 or 11-1 against Burn Aggro. I had an absurdly good matchup where it was not really possible to lose unless I really, really screwed up. Um, that said, um, this was still an overall high win rate, good ladder deck. Um, also, it tended to work out really well as the best way to use Noxus in a tournament list because it's a better deck than Swain. Um, generally speaking, it's a better deck than Swain. Um, and obviously, like, Vladimir is not viable, so it's like, well, you're either playing Nox for Burn Aggro or whatever because the way the tournament formats work, if you don't watch any LOR tournaments, is, generally speaking, um, most formats are you must run three different decks and none of those decks can have overlap. And in some cases, you must play two regions per deck which means you must represent six of the seven regions in the game. Most people said, okay, we're going to skip Freljord, or we're going to use Freljord to, like, add a couple of buff cards into Bannerman, um, but they tended to run Noxus, and they tended to run Noxus plus Piltover Zahn as burn aggro. Um, and so it ended up being one of the, you know, top four or five tournament decks because of the format, um, and it ended up being a... I mean, the probably single most common um, ladder deck. Um, I had more matchups against Burn Aggro than I did against uh, Karina Control or Heimer Vi or anything like that. Um, so it's a very popular deck. It was a very successful deck, and that was played both in ladder and tournaments to good effect. And says, okay, yeah, it's probably a deck that should be nerfed at some point. So Legion Rearguard now dies to 1-1s. One it now dies to Vile Feast. It dies to Withering Whale. This is a really, really big deal. Um, this this is an incredibly big push in power. Now, that said, if you cannot find blockers in time, this will still hit you in the face for nine. If you're Demacia, you're not single combating this anyway. Also, every Demacia unit that gets played has more than one attack. This does not affect Demacia's matchups, I think, literally at all. I can't think of a single unit that I would actually play in a Demacia deck where this change matters. Period. Um, the only change that does come through is it's no longer a transfusion target, and it's no longer a uh, legion demolitionist target. 
Um, that can matter, right? It can matter on a selfish scale, even if it doesn't affect the matchup specifically, because all of Demacia's units have... I mean, no one plays Vanguard Lookout, right? So there are no one-attack units that people actually play in Demacia. Um, even their one-drop is a 2-2, right? So um, so yes, this... this uh, as far as other matches are concerned, like uh, Static Shock now kills it. Again, Vile Fuse and Withering Whale now kill it. Um, if you need to block it with Eye of the Dragon, the 1-3, it now kills it. Although she tended to want to block the 2-1. So, you know, probably doesn't block this anyway, but it can if it has to. Um, yeah, this is... This is this is going to matter. Uh, again, the fact that you're going to lose this to Static Shock. Now, again, keep in mind that it still gets to attack on 1 and 3 in most cases before you Static Shock it. Um, well, okay, not always. But it, it attacks at least once, right? And if you're going to trade it, you're probably going to trade it pretty well anyway. Um, one thing that does matter is now Omenhawk beats it. So there is an indirect Freljord buff here. Um, uh, if you're going to play Ionia, it means Inspiring Mentor now blocks this. So all the, like, the weird um, 1x that buffed something... Uh, which is actually not a small number of the one drops out there. Um, Lonely Poro, right? There's a lot of one ones with upside that exist that now can stop this, which is a really big deal. Um, a lot of decks that weren't very good wanted to play one one with upside. Um, those can now kill Legion Rearguard. You keep the upside, you trade the cards back and forth. That's a big deal. That boasts those decks quite a lot. Next up, we get a Kindly Tavern Keeper. This is nice. It is once again a 3 mana 3 3 with upside. I'm a very big fan of 3 mana 3 3 with upside, um, and even um, 3 mana 3 2 with upside, and um, 2 mana 3 2 with upside. I think those are all very, very good stat lines. Uh, in general, I, I tend to want to think that. Uh, so here, here's one thing I'm going I'm to take a quick divergence for. Um, I think, in general, uh, cards that, that have some kind of upside, like I draw a card, I give you one mana, I do some kind of thing other than just I'm a body, if it has more power than health, it tends to be better than the other way around. So, for example, if Kindly Tavern Keeper was a 3-2, I think that card would have already been viable. Yes, it would have means... Yes, it would mean that that card dies to Avalanche, which is in region, and that can be kind of annoying. But, like, no one wants to Mystic Shot your Kindly Tavern Keeper, right? Like, no one, no one wants to Tempo Mystic Shot this card... So, like, who cares? It means you got a essentially zero card health potion. If you played this in Heal Your Nexus and they ping you, you spent one mana on three health, but you didn't spend a card on three health. It's just better health potion. Um, so, in general, and, and by the way, then by, by, by being a 3-2, it would be able to block most threats at that mana cost, right? It can fight Fiora. It can, um, okay, it doesn't really help with Lucia necessarily, uh, but it can fight Chump. Uh, uh, Chump Wump, right? It can it can actually kill Ezreal uh, if it was to fight. It can kill Karma. Um, those were all pretty valuable spots to be in. It can kill War Chefs. It can um, kill a buffed... I mean, it could have already, but a buffed Fleet Feather Dragon. Anyway, in general, this having three power uh, is a pretty big deal. So it is a 3-3 with upside, um, which is a good stat line. This is a very solid three drop. If you're against some kind of aggro deck, you can reset that first round of damage. Um, you are not losing... Like, one of the big deals, right, is, like, having to play a card to heal is so often difficult because you're down on health because they had a tempo lead on you and played rear guard on one, played grenadier on two, played, you know, some other random crap on three, and you're like, I don't know how to survive. I'm already down, like, 12 life already. How do I live? Oh, I play my three mana two three. Okay, well, they played three more two ones, and they're going to kill you next turn. Like, they didn't, they didn't do anything. You didn't help yourself. But being a three-mana three-three means it can actually kill a unit and live in a lot of cases. Uh, it kills a two-three and lives. That's a very big deal, right? That is a really, really important stat line. Killing a two-three and living is a big state, is a big deal. Um, killing a four-three and just trading out is a very big deal. Um, but you're no longer losing tempo playing this card while still healing an extra for three, which means now if you're trying to play a more ramp-focused failure deck or a slower failure deck, this card is finally playable, isn't a huge tempo loss to play it, and actually buys you that one extra round. Definitely matters a lot. So this is a really big buff. Kindly Tavern Keeper, totally constructed viable. Deep Meditation. Oh my. Now cost five or three. Yep, this card was definitely, definitely good. Um... LOR did not really have efficient draw effects. Uh, it had Glimpse Beyond, which is conditional, right? It had things like Vanguard Redeemer, which is conditional. It had um, uh, uh, Entreat, which isn't even really card draw. It's just card replacement, 
right, for two, which is fine. It's, it's an, I mean, it was kind of bad card, but, you know, exists. Um, okay, Shadow Assassin, amazing card, of course, right, one of the best in the game. Um, maybe it's still the single best card in the game. I, I'm still kind of considering that to be true. Uh, but yeah, direct draw effects were very, very good. And what's interesting is when you were in a mid-game situation, uh, you know, you're, you know, around six or so, um, spells tended to be better than units in a lot of cases because spells are really always valuable. Whereas a unit could be an Omen Hawk or a like really badly timed War Chefs or something. Um, or, you know, the, your turn seven Eye the Dragon is not useful. But a turn seven Will of Ionia is as good or better than a turn four Will of Ionia. And the same goes for um, Spirit's Refuge or. Um, single combat or anything else like the spells in LOR tend to the ones that people actually run tend to all be really impactful people tend to run a bunch of three to six cost spells that are good no matter the game state pretty much which means that deep meditation was reliably drawing very very good cards um very 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 good cards um which made it, made it one of the best draw spells in the game. So it is a five mana draw two, or um, pretty frequently a three mana draw two. And then one other facet of this game that matters is that spell mana is cheap. Um, spell mana needs to be spent. Unless you're curving out exactly on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven forever, you will at some point bank spell, bank spell mana. And that is, at that point, mana that could only ever be spent on things like deep meditation, which means any spell in real terms, costs less than it looks um, just because of the way that spell mana works, the way that mana banking works. And so this ended up being a very, very good draw spell. I totally see nerfing it. It makes total sense. Um, yeah, this is a hugely good card. Um, this is probably still pretty good as well. Uh, I want to point out again, cost two less, not costs two. So it goes from five to three, not five to two. Um, but you would still play the three mana version of this. You would still often play the five mana version of this. Um, now it is going to a point where you're maybe not considering playing it if you're not going to be more reliably getting two spells out in a round. Like this is, this is the kind of thing where it's still only a two meta difference in both cases, but weirdly enough, I kind of feel that going from two to three is less impactful than going from four to five. A five is almost too much to pay for this effect, but three is definitely not. And that's the big thing, right? Even though three to two is arguably a bigger nerf in terms of like percentage, which yes, math says yes. Um, if you aren't ever discounting this card, you maybe don't actually want to spend five on this effect. Uh, it's just almost too expensive. It probably isn't too expensive. This card is still very good. You're probably still going to play this card in a lot of decks. Um, it, you know, these types of decks are going to be very, very good, but you you see it a little bit less as a result. And part of that, of course, because Karma's also getting nerfed. Boom Crew Rookie is now a 1-3. It was a 0-4. It then became a 1-4. Now it's a 1-3. This is kind of the same thing that happened with Hecarim, right? Eventually lost one health and gained one power. Yep, sure. I, I am glad, that the, by the way, that there are varied stat lines. Um, I don't want every unit to be a 2-2 and a 3-3. Three, three. Um, um, but... This ends up working out pretty well. Uh, so it is a 2-mana 3-3 three, three sometimes and a 2-mana 1-3 other times. Obviously, a 2-mana 3-3 three, three is an amazing card, uh, and a 2-mana 1-3 is a terrible card. Um, this is obviously really only good in an aggro deck or a deck that really, really wants to find a reliable way to ping Nexus on 2. Now, what's interesting is that this does not work with Plunder effects because there aren't really any good... Um, I don't believe there are any 1-spell mana Plunder effects. Um, there's a one mana plunder minion, but that's not playable on two with Boom Crew Rookie. Um, and there are two mana plunder effects, um, like Shared Spoils and, uh, Pilfered Goods. Uh, but basically this means that if you are using it for a plunder effect, you're playing Rookie on two and hoping you attack on three. Um, also you're probably just not using Rookie in general. You're probably using, you know, Crackshot Corsair or something, but, um, regardless, um, yes, this is definitely a standout card. I mean, it, it was a two mana three, four which was obviously absurd. Um, so we lose one health on Legion Rearguard, so it's killable. We lose one health on Boom Rookie, so now it dies to a 3-2. Um, and it dies to a 3-2, and the 3-2 lives, which is a big deal. Um, it dies to a 3-3, of course, as well, but uh, there are a lot of... I mean, the fact that this doesn't get a second attack off is a very, very big deal. I mean, this was probably the single best card in that deck. 
Um, I think, yeah, the absolute single standout card in that deck. Um, definitely incredibly, incredibly strong. And the fact that it would almost always, I mean, pretty much actually every single time, it would live on two. It would attack on two. It would always live against the 3-3 three, three or the 3-2 or whatever that blocked it. And then go again. This thing was worth four Nexus damage and two damage to a minion. It's a two mana card that dealt six damage in almost all cases. And sometimes more if you couldn't block it the first time. Absolutely absurd. Um, good nerf to see. Well done getting this one down a little bit. Um, this increases the value of 3-2s. If Burn Aggro is still a deck that is in the meta, you really, really want to get some 3-2s in your decks. You can kill it. Fiora kills it. Buffed Omenhawk kills it. Um, Laurent Chevalier now kills it and lives. That's a big deal. Uh, but that's at 4, so it's going to take a long time to get there, but exists. Brood Awakening is back to 6 mana. I kind of saw this coming. Brood Awakening, when I was playing earlier, when it was at 6, was still a playable card. Um... It got nerfed to 6, got buffed back to 5, nerfed back to 6. I mean, this card is definitely just too good at 5. Uh, just ultimately, that's the case. Um, Shadow Isle is getting very, very, very few nerfs. This is one of them, though. Um, again, I'm going to bring up the point, once again, that um, small nerfs tend to feel general, but they actually have very specific interactions. Um, you, can no longer play, you can no longer play a 1-drop and then Brood Awakening on 3. So you can't play, um, you know, Aristocrat or um, Warden's Prey on 1 and still get Brood down. You have to pass, pass, Brood. Um, or you can curve out on one and two, um, spend sparingly on three, um, aka one mana, and then brood on four. Um, or you, and just like this matters a lot because I mean that was a very common curve for that deck. Like if you didn't have a lease on two, you played a one drop and then brood on three. Um, this is really really big because it means if you want to play brood early, you must take face damage on round one or two. Uh, you no longer have a chump blocker for that. That's a really really big deal. Um, or you have to like play a bunch of your one drops on rounds one through three and then keep waiting on Brood Awakening. Um, this, this matters a lot. This is a big deal. Um, uh, of course we have, as we're talking about things like crowd favorite and for the were a big deal. Um, it's also, um, obviously really good in, um, they who endure, obviously, uh, making your opponent spend more mana. I mean, endure decks in general really, really care about counting their spell mana and having enough for all their effects. Uh, so you're going to have a lot of cases now where it's like, okay, well, even if you play Brood Awakening on Curve on three, um, well, now even if you spent zero mana on round one, you no longer have Withering Whale on four. Whereas if you like did pass, pass Brood, you would have four mana counting spell mana on round four, or sorry, five total mana on round four for Grasp or, or, grasp or Second Brood or... Um, withering whale and stuff like that. So this this tends to have a pretty big ripple effect that that knocks um, they who endure down a fair bit. Um, still, I would say overall um, a good card and a good deck because it didn't get hit very hard. This is another unit going up to two health. Uh, again, very big deal. And this is actually part of it, right? Is that um, a lot of units? That, okay, to be fair, it's units that weren't getting played are getting one health, right? No one played Laurent Chevalier. No one played Longtooth, uh, specifically played Chum the Waters as a real card, and very few people played Fizz in the first place. Fizz leveling up was pretty rare as well. So you weren't really seeing Longtooth very often. You weren't really seeing Chum the Waters very often, so it's not like um, this is, oh, you know, Shadow Isles was good because it killed Longtooth for Vile Feast. Like, no, that's not, that's not why that worked. Um, but Longtooth is a more playable card because now it won't just die to Vile Feast or Withering Whale. Um, and that can matter, right? It doesn't die to Static Shock. That can matter. It doesn't die to One Mana Thermal Beam. That can matter. Um, to its evade red card, all that kind of stuff, right? So uh, does have some some pretty good effects here. Uh, overall, right, this is, you know, if you count Chum the Waters, Chum the Waters is a two, four, four mana spell, four mana slow spell, I believe, um, that uh, gives something vulnerable and summons this 5-2 instead of summoning a 5-1. Um, that becomes a more playable card, right? Because... Even if they like glimpse beyond the 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 chum the waters target, you're still summoning a five two, which like yeah is pretty bad. Like this is, I mean it's it's seven stats, kind of eight with overwhelm. Like like it's weak for four mana. Like even as a five two, you wouldn't play like you wouldn't play this card outright. But it's it's kind of right. It's kind of a five two overwhelm with upside. And, like, weirdly enough, that stat line is almost good enough to be worth considering. Again, if they, like, it, it just actually is, is the weird thing. Uh, and again, because you don't have to use the long tooth to go attack the Karma, you can go give Ezreal Vulnerable, 
Stick your long tooth on the ground. You know it only dies to Mystic Shot, which at that point is a card for a card, but Ezreal's still vulnerable. And you just send a non-Mystic Talk target at the Ezreal to kill it, um, and just let them Mystic Shot the long tooth if they want to. Um, like, the fact that it isn't killed so trivially actually really helps a lot, because uh, it helps the other half of Chum of the Waters be playable. Um, this is actually a very, very meaningful buff to this card. Uh, you probably still don't main deck Chum of the Waters. You... Phase is probably still not that common of a, of a deck archetype overall because I think you'd probably still rather run TF or Karma or something else um, with your um, your spell deck, you know, your least send deck in a lot of cases. But uh, if you ever flip Fizz in a deck where he's played, this card's better. Uh, Shadow Water is probably still slightly below the cut, but uh, much more considerable. And it's now to the point where I would actually consider drafting it in Expeditions, for example. Monkey Idol, this is an important buff because it was definitely two weeks before. Monkey Idol can now actually summon one more token. And I, I talked about that a lot when we were first reviewing the card, that I really want to find a way to get Monkey Idol up to one more health. Um, so it could summon a third Powder Monkey. It's finally there. That's a really big deal. Um, powder Monkeys, I believe, explode for either one or two damage on the Nexus. I believe they are two ones overall or something like that. Um, but they're little like ephemeral units that die and deal damage to the Nexus, right? Um, you obviously play Monkey Idol on 3, then nothing happens, and then on 4 and 5 it would summon. Now it summons on 4, 5, and 6. Um, this gives you more units to die with. It gives you, uh, now you can play this on a defensive turn, and this allows you to attack on 4 and attack on 6 as ephemeral units to give Hecarim XP, or to bump a Shark Chariot back into the game or something like that. Uh, you know, like, play Shark Chariot on 2, play, you know, an attack with it, play Monkey Idol on 3, attack with Powder Monkey on 4, brings your Shark Chariot back out, that kind of stuff. Um, you know, so that kind of stuff kind of exists. I don't think we're really going to see Bilgewater in an Ephemeral deck necessarily, but um, it's... This is definitely a needed buff, right? This card was absolutely unplayable in in uh, Limited and Constructed. Uh, it's still pretty bad. Uh, like, I want to... Like, for some reason... Also, one thing that matters a lot, by the way, one thing that matters actually a lot here is it can actually take four damage and be alive, right? Before it took two damage... And then it would die if you didn't heal it right away, which means health push was inefficient. It meant, um, you know, things like Kindly Tavern Keeper were inefficient. Uh, you just, it was obviously just in a, in a bad spot. Uh, now it can get hit twice and then get healed up and then get two more summons instead of only getting one more summon. So um, that is actually, you know, a little bit more meaningful as well. To be fair, um, healing it is still <clears throat> only worth one summon at a time. But it means that, like, if it gets static shocked or something... Uh, you know, the heal can do a bit more there. It can summon once, then not get killed by Avalanche. You can heal it back to, like, something half-decent. Um, there's just there's just some lineups there. Um, okay, Slotbot is a plus one, plus one. So it's now a three mana, one, four. And a three mana, one, four is not great. It is obviously a weak stat line in and of itself. Um, it would be like having a three mana, two, three, or three mana, three, two. It's not very good. Um, but it's really more like a three mana, three, three, the round after you play it. Okay, that's not terrible. 3 mana 3 3 is mediocre, especially if they will wait to get the stat line, but okay, it's less bad. Um, but it actually has the upside of, well, I drew a bunch of cards this round, so like Slotbot is there to be grabbed off of um, Twisted Fate's pick a card. Like once you draw a ton, you're like, ah, what are the cards of Slotbot? Let's jam it down. Uh, because now you have to kill it or it's a 3 mana 5 4, right? And, and now it matters. Now it's actually half decent. Um, if you can draw three cards on the turn you played this card, it is a 3 mana 5 4 or a 3 mana 4 5 or thereabouts. And it keeps getting it buffed every single round. Um, that is into the territory of playable. Um, that is going to be very good in Expeditions. It is, I would argue, playable. And actually, I would say a good card in a Yoink deck. Um, if you're playing... Um, uh, plunder, draw from my opponent's deck. Drawing from your opponent's deck tends to be very inexpensive, uh, and it tends to draw a lot of cards. And so you have to kind of, you know, balance your mana around in this case because you still have to spend three mini mana to do so, but you now have a really good body um, to support yourself after this one. Um, and it's cards you drew next round. It's not generated in hand, so that is something to consider as well. Um, but basically, it is you play it on a round where you drew a lot of cards, and then you try to keep drawing, and this thing gets big. Now, it doesn't have Overwhelm, right? It's not going to get over the top for a lot, but this will tend to be a body that gets big enough that it, that in a high-drawing deck, which tends to be what Yoink decks do, um, it will be big enough to fight your opponent's biggest minion. It will tend to be big enough to do that, and that's good enough for a 3-drop.
that it sticks on the board and it says, well, once you play your, um, you know, your wild, your alpha wild claw, your seven, six over one for six, well, that's okay. I'm already a seven, seven. Let's fight. And that'll work out pretty well. So I like these buffs, right? Um, they're buffs to cards that were absolutely unplayable. They're nerfs to cards that were definitively overpowered. Unplayable. I would not necessarily say overpowered, but certainly part of one of the best decks in the game. I didn't need to see this nerf, but I think it's okay to have it. Um, deserved nerf. Good buff. Deserved nerf. Deserved buff. Deserved buff. Definitely deserved nerf. Deserved buff. And deserved nerf, I would say. And then deserved buff here as well. Like, I am I am supportive of every single change they made in this patch. I think they were all good changes. Um, we'll do a quick TLDR. Uh, Vladimir now heals your Nexus at level 2 with his hero power. That is very strong. Um... It's not as good as you might think on paper, because I think you tend to only attack with him once or twice anyway. You don't always have a full board, but this is definitely a big uptick and should put a Vladimir deck maybe around tier two or tier three, instead of being pretty much unplayable with a winning win rate. Uh, Karma down, or costing one more mana, definitely meaningful there as well. Uh, very much a meaningful nerf here. That's going to be felt. Karma is in a lot of top tier decks. Uh, Shen getting buffed by one power is a really, really big deal. It's okay for Shen to simply kill two units and die. That is fine. And Shen is more likely to do that, which will make him a very good card. This is a good four drop. Doesn't have to level up to be a good card. Vi going down to a functionally, functionally five health because of tough makes her actually die to competing five drops. Very big deal. Hecarim is now a five, five versus six, six. That's a good enough stat line to be played finally. Um, and we might see an ephemeral deck sit around tier two or something. Greyhound Companion can actually now fight other 5 drops. Very big deal there. Grizzled Ranger, only 3 power. Very big deal. Chevalier doesn't die to really stupid combat effects now. Uh, doesn't die to uh, 1 damage pings, which might make this card playable, but we'll see. Uh, Loyal Badger Bear is now only a 3-4 instead of a 4-4. Well-deserved nerf. Definitely still a pretty decent card. Uh, is probably not an auto-include anymore, although we probably still see Grizzled Ranger all the time. Um, standalone. Um, didn't super need to see this nerf, I don't think, but, uh, this is going to be a very, very big hit, because you can't just play a 3-drop, and then instantly stand alone it to win the game. Legion Rearguard now dies to all the random 1-1s people like to play in Freljord and other regions. Uh, can help them a lot against the Baron Aggro decks, as my nose keeps itching. Kindly Tower Keeper being a 3-mana 3-3 three three is actually a playable card. A 3-mana 3-3 three three with upside is good. Deep Meditation costs one more mana, so it costs 5 or 3 if you get the, uh, two spells off in the round prior. Um... Very much worth playing at three. Maybe not worth playing at five, so it might drop off some decks that aren't very heavy on spell synergy. Boom Kuroki is now a one three. That is a very big deal because it will tend to die to a lot of two drops because a lot of two drops are three twos, but it will tend to die to almost any three drop in the game because they tend to be three threes or better. Brood Awakening goes back to costing six mana, which is totally reasonable to do. Long Tooth no longer has one health, which means it can maybe be a playable card. And we're talking about Chum the Waters here. Um... I think it's a good enough card in Expeditions. Chum the Water is probably still not getting put into Constructed decks, but maybe. This is maybe good enough. Maybe just good enough. Monkey Idol gives a third idol. Also um, survives slightly more effects down the line. Uh, probably still a bad card. It's it's always going to be a combo piece. It's never going to be a complete all-star, but um, definitely needed the buff. Definitely, definitely needed the buff. Slotbot, actually playable card. Uh, very good in Expeditions. Probably playable in Constructed. The fact that it actually has a decent enough stat line now... To where if you even do nothing with it, it is a 3-mana um, 2-4 or a 3-mana 3-3 um, three, three is, you know, reasonable-ish. But if you are playing card draw synergy, this thing is going to actually get pretty big. Um, I think it's going to be very, very good in Pilfer decks, and uh, that's going to be a positive. So cool to see this one as well. And then, okay, we've got a little watch list. Undealing Spirit might get nerfed. Pilfer because in Card Stealing might get nerfed. Uh, Nexus Damage and Rising Trides, uh, they nerfed some of it, of course, as well. Karma Ezreal, they're still talking about, but they nerfed Karma, so it's pretty okay. And then we get a bunch of rules, text, clarity, which I'm a fan of, as well as the Rainbow Poor Guardian emote. Good stuff. The arcade board. More emotes as well. Arcade card back. I'm about it. Got some quick Expeditions archetypes. I didn't scroll all the way down to look at these, so this is now after the TLDR. Um, but no longer twice as likely to see Rising Tides archetype. So it's back to more reasonability, which means, by the way, we're going to see a lot less... Um, overall um deep synergy right because oftentimes you got nautilus you wanted to play maokai um just to get deep faster um and that's no longer really the case so you're you know, it actually is an indirect nerf to things like deep um Demacia adjustments relentless they're going to add a bad card 
Um, yeah, so Relentless is going to be generally a little bit uh, weaker because um, these were... Yeah, Vanguard Sergeant was a very, very good card, and it's gone, so now it's just Ford Amasius. It's an objective nerf to Relentless. Um, Trefarian Hopeful uh, was the 5-2 that could block. I would say it was a better card than Trifarian. Grizzled Ranger is obviously getting out. It's a nerf. Grizzled Panic going out is a... Um, now that that card's getting buffed, a nerf as well. So this is overall, Demacia is weaker. Uh, Retribution, Chronicler of Ruin, On Guard, Hapless Aristocrat, Mobilize, and Purify. So a lot of burst spells that aren't all that good. Although this was a bad card, this was almost incredibly and difficult to play. Back to back was good. Yeah, so they got rid of mostly weak cards. I would say Scarab of Sorrows was pretty weak. Crux was very hard to play. Absorb Soul was very hard to play. Back to back was actually good. Um, Purifies okayish. Mobilizes okayish. Aristocrats fine. On guard is fine. So I like this because if you are getting a million undyings and you know one one camp blocks, um, actually on guard gets you there to the point where you can actually fight them. I actually like this kind of a bit. Um, Scouts get Chain Vest, which is very good. Fort Amasia, I think, is weak. Mobilize is okay. Resolve is actually not bad in Scouts, uh, but they lost some very, very good cards. Um, Warned is fine to get rid of. Who cares? Uh, but this is generally a nerf to scout it out. Um, yeah, well, this is this is generally a nerf. Um, Shield Wall gets Blinding Assault, which is whatever. We lost Green Glade. We lost Grizzled Ranger. We lost Herald of Spring. Laurent Protégé. Sonic Wit. Like, yeah. So Shield Wall lost a ton of very good Demacian cards and gets... Body Salt, which totally does work in a in a barrier deck, um, so it has some some fitting there. And then Suit Up, which is another you know uh, yet another Demacia archetype, um, losing a great card in Wild Cloud, losing a great card now that's getting buffed in Great Horn Companion, losing Badger Bear, losing Repose, losing some Combat. All these are very 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 good cards. They're getting detained, which is fine. On Guard is a bit weak. Uh, Plucky Poro is fine. Um, but no wait, this is the one one tough. It's a pretty weak card. Radiant Strike is uh, fine. Range of Resolve a little bit weak in this case, and Scarthian Stefan is okay. So more nerf to Demacia, and they're specifically getting rid of generically good cards and saying no, no, no. Here's some specific things. So yeah, a lot of nerfs to Demacia in limited here. Um, you're gonna see a lot less um, super cohesive Demacia decks as a result. Um, cloning program gets Vi instead of Ezreal, which makes sense because you're trying to jam through cards to like you know buff the Vi, so it, it fits the archetype. Um, Death's Door loses um, this is a pretty good card this is a pretty good card this was okay but kind of bad this is a pretty good card um, solid good mediocre very good so interesting it's, it's a, it, I mean this fits the theming a lot better I would say um, so I'm you know kind of glad on these changes existing overall uh, it fits the theming a lot better so in this context I'm about it um, Disruption is the uh, Yasuo um, um stun deck um so they add darius in as a possible champion which makes total sense done a bunch of things attack with overwhelm i like it um this is hand buff this is hand buff this is just very good card um darius instead of swain uh, i guess makes sense actually so instead of swain stunning things you know finding ways to stun things darius is your other finisher which i think actually makes a bit more sense because you weren't doing a lot of direct damage otherwise um minus ghost minus retreat minus okay yeah this is like a decent ish card i mean it wasn't great but it was okay um, Ghost Retreat were... My nose just won't stop itching. Um, a little mediocre, uh, although Retreat was okay. Um, this ends up making this deck a little bit more minion heavy, which is probably fine. Okay, Boom Crew Rookie. Brash Gambler is just unplayable. Jury Rig is mediocre. Aces is bad. Summit Urchin is bad. Fault Breaker is okay, but bad. Zona Urchin... I mean, it's not really a d discard deck. Um, Fishbones will now always include Jagged Taskmaster and Presser Von Yip. This may force you into a Tri Region deck. Which is no issue. Interesting. So Fishbone's champion packs always include both these things, which is needed to make the deck work in the first place. Um, okay, yeah. Um, added gotcha, which is pretty good. You're trying to turn through cards. Um, hired gun is a good card. Monkey idol, uh, sure, I guess. Mystifying worked out pretty well. Uh, Patrol Wardens is okay. Shell Shocker is fine. Thermobium is fine. Yeah, this is a much better look at this deck. This this looks a whole lot better overall. Um, I'm I'm pretty pretty big fan of this. Um, and the fact that you get this is a really big deal. This makes the one drop deck so much better. It also means, by the way, that like if you are playing Fish Bones and you can get the three wins, you will be offered Fish Bones again. Right? You are guaranteed to be offered that Champion Pack, um, which means like. If, if you can find it, you will guarantee by your third win that you have three Taskmasters and three Von Yips um, in a 36-card deck. That is very reliable. That is very good. 
Grand Moments, previously Spellbound, so it's the, it's the big spell. We get Four Damasi instead of Vanguard Sergeant. So again, more Nurse, because I mean, this is just the objectively better version of Four Damasi, because it draws that card for you. Um, so another nerf to that. We doubled Valor, I think totally makes sense in Grand Moments. Minus Repost makes sense there as well. So weaker cards overall. Uh, yep, totally get it. Yasari comes in to the Shadows and Dust. We lose Claws, we lose Deep Meditation, we lose Eye of the Dragon, we lose Mark of the Isles. We lose... So we lose a lot of spell synergy to play more Elusives. Okay. Uh, smash and grab. We're losing Boom Kuroki for the aggro. Brash Gambler is a bad card. Pick a card is bad. Pilfered Goods is fine. Rummage is bad. Salvage is good. Beast Below is solid, but definitely a little weird in Smash and Grab. Um, but we are still... Yes, this is like the, the kind of Pilfer deck, and they're running... Interesting. So they're adding Lure of the Depths instead of Beast Below, which is, I would say, arguably a better card overall if you are using it as a secondary um, deep side, um, especially with Jaw Hunters getting added. Um, this is a lot of power. Uh, I would say most of these cards were fairly weak in this deck archetype. Um, so I would say this is overall a buff to Smash and Grab. Uh, Spell Slingers. Uh, Bubble Bear is a terrible card. Green Duo is quite good. Scout Hunter is okay. Hoarder is um, pretty solid. We're getting, though, a bunch of cheap spells. Deny, Key Guardian, Pocket Ace is mediocre. Refuge is good. Warren's fine. Grifter is good. Um, this also means in Spell Slingers you want to try to get a little bit more into mono um, Bilgewater. And then Ancient Evil gets Stalking Wolf instead of Ruthless Raider. Um, okay, some more Challenger instead of the 3-1 Tough Overwhelm. Got it. A Cataclysm gets some more um, unique stuff. We remove these. Interesting. Okay, I mean, again, Brash Gambler is really just a weak card. It makes it really, really bad. It's really hard to use. Um, Shadow Shift's a bad card as well. Funsmith's pretty bad as well. Insightful's fine. Recall's okay-ish. Um, but Shadow Shift's obviously very good. And Horns of Dragon is actually not bad at all. Um, Unyielding Spirit, Gone in Crimson Guard. Rip, Unyielding Spirit, winning more games. Um, Demacian Steel gets First Blade and On Guard. Those are generally weak cards. They have upside, and theoretically there is... Um, On Guard is a give your whole board challenger, by the way. First Blade is the 2-2 that gets plus 2 plus 2 every attack. Um, Discipline loses Recall, Shadow Shift, and Retreat, which are generally fairly weak, but against Keeper Mask, which is generally pretty strong. Um, first of the draw, again, loses a bad card. Um, loses a pretty good card. Loses a bad card. Um, gets Jagged Butcher. Actually, this is this is okay-ish. This is an okay card. Uh, but it gets a one-drop and gets Slot Bot, which is actually pretty good as well. Uh, Shrooms get Patrol Warden and loses an Elusive. Yep, sure, sounds good. Uh, Hired Gun and Darkwater Scourge go away from Terrors of the Deep, which I think fits the theming pretty well. We get the Narwhal and Hunting Fleet instead. Yep, makes sense. You get a 7-7, seven, seven, you get an Elusive, you get... Yep, totally about it. And then the Recall deck loses Salesman, Twirler, Shadow Flare, and Empyrean. Interesting that, that Twirler is going away from a Recall deck. Um... But we're getting Windfair Hatchling as the better... I would say this is the better elusive. So this is just a, an, an objective buff, I would say. And then Aeronaut goes here instead. Um, I mean, this this feels like a buff overall to Total Recall. And then... Um, random other... So we got some bug fixes as well. Um, different queue, the one selected. Uh, right amount of XP. Uh, wrong music. Bilgewater stuff. Verse stream would increasingly show the icon. Various level ups now function correctly in other languages. Good stuff. Um, cards weren't showing up. Okay. Great. Vi Vault Breaker. Okay, cool. Good stuff. Um, got the rarity gem correctly on a couple more things. That's good. Charm the Waters can now be played without immediate play. Oh, that's cool. I like this a lot. Yeah, this is actually another buff to Charm the Waters, which is nice. Because um, you could just summon the 5 2 and go. That's, that's a good buff as well. Um, and no longer does Lux Damage have been played multiple times. Wow. I could, okay, I can see that. Uh, whoops. Um, and works properly with Possession. Cool. Well, hey, I, I like the changes. Um, I think it's a good patch overall. Again, I, I actually agree with a lot of the like heavy Demacia nerfs because it needed to happen. Um, not seeing Vanguard Sergeant so much is a really big deal because that card is definitely absurd. Um, fun, fun patch. I like it a lot. Uh, and I'll see, uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.